Hello and welcome to my next video where I would like to explain how to enable the request a copy function that uh, is now available with the recent versions of DSpace. In the previous video I um, demonstrated how to enable embargoes so now I just want to demonstrate what would uh, how to enable the request a copy function should a user want uh, a copy of an embargoed item. Okay, so again, as usual, uh, if you want to follow along, please uh, go to that link there and then click on this IRA guide. Um, again, uh, this is an operational issue, so I've got it under the operational guide. Uh, click on the index there again to can request a copy. Okay, just a bit of background. The request a copy function uh, was made available in DSpace versions 4. Uh, that's why I have a configuration for 4 and 5. Um, we'll come to the embargo control uh, with these two items later on. But I've got them there for reference, uh, how to um, control embargoes. And then down here there's some references to the actual um, DSpace documentation. Okay, so to enable it for DSpace 5 uh, X versions 5X, we just click here. All right. Um, I just want you to uh, be aware that there was a bug um, where the request to copy um, didn't actually send an email to the author, uh, even the, even if the author uh, metadata, the author details were in the item metadata and apparently that has been fixed but with our application there, there are the two, two ways to implement or two options to implement the request a copy you can uh, if you look here at this item here you can make sure that all the request a copy emails go to your help desk for your repository or your, your, your system or um, you can switch that off and say false and then the emails will go to the authors. If the author uh, email is in the metadata, it will go to the author. But we, uh, because we have uh, author ambiguity, etc., we felt it much safer that all the emails go to the help desk and we let the librarians or the what we call the digital scholarship team deal with the emails on a on a one by one basis. So I was asked to, to um, ensure the requested copy sent all emails to our help desk and our help desk email is scholar at sun.ac.za. So to do that, to enable, to make sure that requested copy uh, for version 5 sends emails to the help desk and not to the author, um, please follow this procedure. So the first step um, is then, of course, to modify the DSpace config file. Now here I'm going to log into our campus development system as the DSpace user. And I will do the configuration there. It has been done already on the system, but I will go through the motions to show you how it's done. So that's the first step is to log into your server. Um, and then copy and paste that command. I'm um, going to copy and paste it in here. And then paste it in here. Okay, so we're in the DSpace config file. What we want to look for is this term here in there. So we copy that. And here I type control W to, s to do a search and then paste that in. And then press enter. Okay, so you can see that this. Uh, configuration is right at the bottom of the DSpace config file and then for this uh, for this uh, server it's true so we send all the emails to the help desk uh, all the requests to copy emails to the help desk and the help desk email is the mail admin email so to save that, we type controller, and we're going to have a look now where that mail admin variable comes from. So we control O to write that out, and control X. Now that uh, 
variable comes from the build pro build.properties file, and I'll demonstrate that there. It should be uh, in the sorry the source folder. Uh, build the properties. Okay, so in the build the properties, you should find a variable um, configured to the mail admin in the email configuration, which we go down here. So therefore, there's my email or my mail server that sends mail is mail that sun. And then we just got to look for the mail from address, the mail admin address there, mail admin. Okay, so there's the mail admin address, and so all our emails go to that address now, because it hasn't configured, the mail admin address. Okay, the mail admin address is configured in the dspace config file. Oh, sorry, the build properties file. Okay. So then the next step is um, to make sure um, that dspace sends its emails to the uh, help desk. Uh, and that is to disable the request item auto extractor and enable the um, uh, enable the um, request item also extract a help desk strategy. There, yeah, use the help desk strategy uh, and remove the item, the metadata strategy. Disable that. So, to do that, uh, you copy and paste this command there. This more copy and paste that there. And we're going to modify the request item XML file. So, we go down here. And you see that this is enabled, okay? Uh, because I removed these comments and that around the request item on the original file, and then here I added this in there. That I added that, and I added that to disable the um, item metadata strategy, and then I've enabled the uh, item help this strategy, okay? So that's how you do it there on, on, the, on, this, on, this, on the spring side, on the API side. And then to save it, you type control O and press enter and control X. All right. And then of course, step three, um, which I'd like to add in here, step three is to rebuild um, step three is then to rebuild um, uh, is to rebuild this place. and I will point to the rebuild script there just now okay so step three then is to rebuild uh, the dspace application and then um, I will do some I will demonstrate what uh, the request copy fun how the request copy function works uh, on our development server. So um, that should then enable the request copy function. So uh, this has been done on our products on this our development server, as you saw with the doc the, uh, the demonstration there. So now we can go to our local. Um, Server here and see how this uh, this works on a, a live system. Okay, so here is our development server, and there are some items here um, that I've already um, embargoed. Uh, this one here, um, and this is running the Mirage One theme, a default Mirage One theme. With, with, there's no modifications to it. And when you, there is an embargo on the bitstream, you get a little lock icon there. Okay, that's to tell the user that this is an embargo item. And then when I click on there, uh, if you know, if you see, if you're watching this, if I click on there, you see the request a copy um, page comes up, and you're required to put in your name, your email address, and a message. Now this email then goes through to the scholar um, mailing address. So for example, I'm going to put in here Hilton Gibson is my name and my email address is Gibson and some address in the day. And I can say I want all files, all request files, I, I can set that up. Please in
and I'm just going to tell my uh, colleagues that this is just a testing email that they need not to apply to it. Okay, uh, and then we, you just click on request a copy and there should be a confirmation uh, coming back. There we go. Uh, it says that your request has been sent to the author or responsible person. Um, normally the author or responsible person, probably the same person as the contact person there. Um, it's probably a good bet. So you could send an email there to them and ask them uh, what's the progress of your request. I'm not sure if there's any workflow to check uh, on these responses. Um, if you get an email that a response has been sent, um, we can check on that. Let's see if we get an, an email that says um, uh, we sent a response. Um, I just want to log into my email here locally. Okay. No, it didn't send me an email saying that I sent a response. So it seems that the you would, it's up to you to follow up on your request. Um, by um, contacting these people, sending them an email, telling them you've done the request and, and you would like to know what's happening. Okay, so that's uh, how you enable it and how you use the request to copy uh, function uh, using DSpace 5. And uh, I think that concludes my uh, presentation. Uh, thank you very much.